We've put in all our hard work. The base is perfect. Now it's time to build a patio. Our base is ready. The materials have been delivered. It's time to lay some pavers. Okay, we've read a line from our layout stakes. Now we're gonna take this paver restraint, even it up with the line, and then stake it down. You're gonna to wanna to put these in about every two feet. Okay, before we nail down our second restraint, what we're going to do is lay out the actual material that we've gotten to measure it. Even though our measurements are good, some of our material can vary in sizes. As you can see, by laying out our material, we're going to have to adjust our paper restraint about an inch or so. So what we'll do is just pull it in, and now we're ready to stake it down. For our screed rail, we're going to use a three-quarter inch PVC pipe. The good thing about this is it's cheap and it's got a one-inch diameter. That's good. With both paper restraints in place, we can use those to screed off of. There's an easy trick and I'll show you how. Cut a notch in your screed board big enough to leave a one-inch gap between the board and your base. This restraint measures an inch and three-quarters. So I'm going to cut a three quarter inch notch in my board that will leave a one inch gap. Our board is cut, so now we are ready to screed one inch of sand. Don't worry about doing it all at once, work in sections that are easy to manage. Take as much time as you need and get the sand as smooth as possible. After you slide your screed pipe down, you will need to go back and fill the void with sand. You can use a trowel, but I prefer a small garden shovel. Start laying pavers at the lowest elevation and work uphill. I'm going to start the corners with 6x9s to offset the bond. Continue to lay your pavers in the pattern you chose. I decided to do a contrasting border in color and shape. Lay each paver gently, trying not to disturb your sand bed. It's okay to step on your freshly laid pavers, just try not to step too close to the edge. Make sure to pull from one corner of the pallet to the other, working through multiple layers and bands simultaneously. Stop every few feet to make sure your bond lines are straight. This is easy to do with your big ass square. You only need to screed out enough sand to do a section at a time. Continue to lay pavers, checking bond lines every few feet. Watch how I'm pulling from one side of the pallet to the other. I'm going to change patterns in my patio. Again, I will use 6x9s to offset my bond without having to make any cuts.
You don't always have to start your course on the same side. As you go on, continue to check bond lines and eat through the pallet from corner to corner. Basically, don't get lazy on me. Congratulations, you've laid the bulk of your pavers, but you're not quite out of the weeds yet. What we need to do now is pave around the fireplace and do some last finishing touches. Our sand has been screened and smooth. We're just going to continue with our pattern and go up to our fireplace. This area is going to call for some odd sizes, so all we'll do is cut some pavers so they fit in there perfectly. You might be tempted to cut a small sliver to fill the gap, but it's always better to cut a bigger one to size. The paver's close enough to fitting into the section and you don't want to cut it. Don't forget, you can always hammer them into submission. If you take your time and do it right, all your pavers will fit in tight. All your pavers have been laid. The last thing you have to do is restrain the last loose pavers. Use your trowel to screed away the sand down to the rock base. Just remember, you want those nails going into the rock, not the sand. When you're finished paving, use some of your excavated dirt to fill in your exposed base. As you can see, our pavers have been laid and restrained. Now we just have to make sure they interlock by using our plate compactor. All right, it's time to get to work. Yes, we're just gonna drive it right on top of the pavers. Broke it. You will want to compact your pavers into the sand base. This will smooth them out even further have to make sure to go over every paver several times. Well, sorry guys for the outside noise, but I ripped this off when I was starting the plate compactor, so that's that. Now that all of our pavers are nice and smooth and they're compacted into place, it's time to interlock them using sand. I'm gonna use polymeric sand because I don't want a bunch of weeds and roots growing up in between my pavers. Whatever sand you choose to go on the joints, make sure to cover your entire patio. Not only will this polymeric sand interlock the pavers, but it'll also cover any imperfections you may have. Of course, I don't have any, but you might. Now you're gonna go back to your compactor and vibrate the sand into the joints. You're gonna repeat this process until you can't get any more sand in there. If you compacted the sand into the joints properly, this is how it should look. If you chose to use polyvuric sand, make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions. If you take the time to do everything right, and you listen to everything I said, this is what you'll end up with. Well, that's it. After all your hard work and the poly sand is dry, it's time to enjoy your brand new Roman stone paver patio. I think we might be able to use a table here or something. <laughs>